Hi everybody, welcome to the Queer Network. My name is Justin Gerhardt and I am here with Matthew Puccini. Did yes, I say that right? Yes, you did. Like Puccini, the the like the composer. Yes, yeah. absolutely. No no relation. Are you sure? I'm I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, but if but anyone wants to If tell it gets me you in a room, it does sometimes. Yeah. Then use it, right? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> a little bit about you, Matthew. Where who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. Um I I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area, okay. and then I moved to New York uh, a while ago now for film school at NYU. Okay. Um, and then uh, I've been here ever since, and okay. I'm, I'm a, a filmmaker, a mm -hmm. writer and director, mm -hmm. um, and and I'm hopefully in the process of making a feature film soon. Wow, that is like one of your main goals right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The goal is to kind of keep the momentum from the short films and, and turn that into. Uh, a feature in the next year or two, um, and and yeah, I, I would say like most of my work is about uh, you know queer characters mm -hmm. uh, and and trying to kind of um, tell more nuanced and uh, naturalistic mm -hmm. films that are centered around uh, queer people. Right. This is um, this one's <laughs> from me. What? I know you said not to get you anything, but it's small. It's signed by the whole cast. I love it. Good. Oh. Speaking of short films, something I want to talk about today is Lavender, mm -hmm. a short film that you created how long ago already this is? We filmed in 2018, May okay. of 2018, mm -hmm. um, and then the film premiered at Sundance earlier Amazing. this year in January. Um, what is it about? Uh, the film is about a younger gay character who is in a relationship with an older married gay couple, mm -hmm. um, played by Ken Barnett and Michael Urey, mm -hmm. uh, who some people might know from Ugly Betty and mm -hmm. from all of his Broadway uh, success. Call me up one rainy afternoon I'll arrange for a quiet little spoon Think of all the joy and bliss We can hug and we can Watch it. talk about the weather <laughs> Cast was phenomenal. Yeah, oh, like, they're so special. Yeah, um, very special people. Yeah, we really lucked out with mm -hmm. the, the three actors that play the central trio because they um, are all openly gay and also all already knew each other uh, mm -hmm. coming into the process of making this film. Right. Um, and so there was just like a lot of trust and intimacy already like as soon as we were all yeah. meeting to talk about the script. Mm -hmm. And um, you can feel it, I think, in the, in the way that the film yeah. unfolds. Um, and uh, so, yeah, the film kind of tracks this unconventional relationship um, over the course of its last weekend as okay. it kind of unravels. Okay. When you thought about creating this, what was what, what inspired you to create this story as one of your first short films? Yeah, the film is uh, partially inspired by personal experience. Okay. I had been spending some significant time with an older gay couple mm -hmm. in 2017. Okay. Um, older, as in like, you know, like late 30s, yeah. I guess. Um, <laughs> well, which is not Older old. can be a lot of different Yeah, it can be older than me. Um, yeah. But basically, uh, I, the more time I spent with them, the more I was just kind of struck by the mm -hmm. maturity of their lifestyle and their relationship yeah. and um, kind of realized that those were things that I really wanted mm -hmm. for myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, there was just like this kind of yearning mm -hmm. that I felt that I think a lot of younger queer people feel as they're starting to navigate intimacy for the first time. Yeah. And I, I wanted to put that on screen. Mm -hmm. um, and then also I think just felt like I, obviously there have been many things that have depicted, mm -hmm. you know, throuples or yeah. polyamory or a menage on screen mm -hmm. and, and whatever you want to call it. But right. I, I still was, I think, hungry for something that captured the kind of love and intimacy aspect yeah. of it more so than like the kinkier aspects yes. or the you know capacity for jealousy and yeah. wanted to make something that was really affirming and, yeah. and kind of uh, nuanced about it. Yeah, we live in such a different time where we're not hiding or, or gay relationships they're not trying to hide or at least like a, an older couple isn't trying to hide the relationship anymore they're actually yeah. celebrating it openly mm -hmm. and and so I think you know there's 
there's really not been a, a blueprint of how to move forward in in like 2019. Like absolutely how we do that, and then how you incorporate um, that generational gap between somebody who's mm -hmm. just becoming who they want to be, as opposed to somebody who's like been gay and known they were gay for the last 40 years. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And I think in the short, you kind of understand on so many levels why this younger person is drawn to them, mm -hmm. um, because I think. A lot of younger queer people are still looking for uh, older mentors yeah. to kind of guide them through their 20s and yeah. however however much longer than that. But there's an, in in an inheritance mm -hmm. that a lot of us are still seeking. Yeah. Um, and he finds that with this couple. Uh, yeah. And in and in return, I think what they get out of it is um, a kind of solution to a question that a lot of gay couples I know are asking, which is like, how do we preserve the queerness mm -hmm. of our lives mm -hmm. as we subscribe to marriage. Yeah, and um, mainstream. Right. Or a more mainstream lifestyle, or what can be perceived as mainstream. Exactly. We're not hiding anymore. Yeah. And our life isn't just about sex. <laughs> right. I, I, <laughs> These stereotypes that have like you know been placed on us for a reason, but at the same time, it was because everything was so secretive at one point. Yeah. You know, that that was the only way we could express ourselves. Mm -hmm. And yet it is still a way that we would like to still express ourselves mm -hmm. in some way, but that we are so much more than that. Right. Now. Like, exactly. There's, I mean, sex is definitely a part of the film, and mm -hmm. like there is a sensuality mm -hmm. to everything, and we definitely didn't want to shy away from yeah. that. Um, but yeah, putting it front and center rather than having it be something that's mm -hmm. happening furtively. Yeah. Um, and it's even implied that like, you know, the, the couple's friends know about him mm -hmm. as their third. And right. you know, it's not something that they're trying to kind of keep upstairs yeah. in any way. Mm -hmm. How do you think open relationships have changed, you know, oh in the queer community over the last ten years or like in the last while? Like yeah. since even making the film, I mean we are in such a different time even since ten years ago. Mm -hmm. And and it's so much more open. Well, it's funny, it's, it's hard to know how much they've changed because I think what has changed is just that people are talking about it. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know how much the actual relationships are changing, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's now much more socially acceptable to yeah. be open about being in an open relationship. Yeah. And so, um, and, and even in, as we've screened the film, you know, so many people have confided or come up to me after screenings and been like, I've been in a really similar yes. situation, um, gay and straight, mm -hmm. queer, you know, it's, it's, it's something that I think appeals more and more to people as um, our ideas of what marriage or a relationship mm -hmm. have to be are yeah. kind of continued to be challenged. Yeah. Um, and so... Which is great that it's also, it's not just a gay story. It's something that uh, yeah. any kind of identity can can relate to in some way because we, we all want to be in relationships. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. always trying to sort of find that line between making something that's like very specifically queer mm -hmm. and like through a queer lens yeah. while also always knowing and hoping that there are universal themes in that that yeah. are just about our pursuit of intimacy and love um, mm -hmm. that can relate to or resonate with really any audience. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we've played like a mix of gay and or queer and straight film mm -hmm. festivals and uh, the, the response has always been, uh, you know, similar. Yeah. So, yeah. The, after watching it myself, I noticed that there's like a, a sense of freedom that comes with these open relationships. There's like this, yeah, freedom is the best way to describe it. But then there's also confusion and pain that is explored mm -hmm. like from, from the younger man's uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's like such a duality there. I would sort of say that that's any relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think like in depicting an open relationship, I didn't want to overly glorify it or overly stigmatize it. I think yeah. we just wanted to show something that felt real. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, in, in, as much as you can in a 10 minute film. Mm -hmm. And so it does kind of cover, you, you see obviously the, the benefits of it and why mm -hmm. these three people ended up in the situation. Um, but then you also see its end. Yeah. Happy for you. Bye. Bye. I'll see you soon. Bye.
Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. We really tried to find that line in the end of how it all went down so mm -hmm. that, you know, it's obviously sad and, you know, it, it, it um, people are hurt, but yeah. there's a sense that all three people are trying to conduct the situation with as much dignity mm -hmm. um, and love for each other as Respect. possible. Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, which is how I would hope people yeah. would do that in the first place. Um, mm -hmm. Showing people another way to communicate. Yeah. It that would. it doesn't have to be dramatic and, and like over the top. That might be the assumption. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that's what open relationships hopefully are mm -hmm. founded on. Yeah. It's like particularly strong communication yeah. between, between the people who are involved. Yeah. So uh, where can people watch this beautiful short film? Um, a couple of different ways. It's still playing film festivals. Okay. Um, so if it's coming to a city near you, then uh -huh. keep an eye out for that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also available um, on Vimeo okay. and online on YouTube, okay. both on um, Fox Searchlight's channels. Gotcha. Um, the film was acquired by Fox Searchlight out mm -hmm. of Sundance. Amazing. And so it has been, uh, they've been, you know, hugely helpful in pushing it out there. Distributing it, yeah. Um, and, uh, we even played briefly for theaters, in theaters for a week in New York and L.A. So. Amazing. That um, is awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, we'll definitely put some links in the description for you guys to go Please. find the short film <laughs> and then share it with all the people you think need to see it. Yeah. Uh, because I think this is definitely how we learn and grow and, and realize what is possible within relationships and that it's not just this binary idea of, of what we thought relationships were based upon straight relationships mm -hmm. for all of history. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and all the media that we grew up with. Yeah, yeah. and all the sh romantic comedies we ever saw growing up. Are you working on anything else specific right now, or is there anything people can look out for? There's a new short film uh, that I wrote and directed, which we're finishing right now. Okay. Um, it's called Dirty, mm -hmm. and it's about That's a... It. <laughs> it is, actually. Uh, maybe not in the way you'd think. Um, Perfect. But it's about a pair of high school boyfriends who cut class to lose their virginities Amazing. to each other. Um, and it's, I guess, another sort of effort to put something out there that's um, nuanced and real mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, in many ways like the type of film that I wish I had been able to yes. see when I was in high school and hopefully captures uh, queer sex and mm -hmm. intimacy in a way that feels really like detailed and, and honest. Yeah, because once again, there is not a, a blueprint out there much for for young queer people right now like for yeah. those high school students that are actually watching sitcoms mm -hmm. right now like it's not not that we're going to show you exactly how to do it but we're going to give you some ideas mm -hmm. about how this could look yeah and that you don't have to feel weird about it right exactly you know, like sex, sex education on 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 netflix is a prime example of a show i think that like tackles some really awkward things mm -hmm. and makes them not as awkward or like uncomfortable with how awkward they are. Or exactly. comfortable with how awkward they are. Right. I yeah. think just making something that feels realistic and affirming mm -hmm. at the same time can yeah. be really valuable, hopefully. Amazing. So that is the main thing right now. And mm -hmm. then um, hopefully, uh, you know, getting a feature film yeah. off the ground in the next year or so. So Amazing. fingers crossed. Yeah. We'll Script see. written already or is it? <laughs> no, no. It's no. early, early stages, yeah. um, but kind of pulling um, some of the sensibility of mm -hmm. lavender mm -hmm. um, and, and trying to kind of expand that world a little bit. Absolutely. There's yeah. definitely, I, as I watched it, I was like, this needs to be a full film. Oh. <laughs> you could. Yeah, it could be explored. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Let's, let's see if we're up to the task. Yes. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us on The Queer Network. Thanks for having me. Thank you, everybody, for watching. As I said, we will put all of Matthew's information in the descriptions. You can go check out Lavender and just keep up to date with, uh, with his next project as he keeps working on them. If you've never been to The Queer Network before, subscribe to the channel. We do new videos every month. And uh, we thank you so much for supporting us, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.